here's the wrap. This is a partial DIYer, and uh, we just uh, we built the gutter, put the inverter and bypasses up, and and wired it all up. Disconnects outside, and then we feed the house down there, and we retired the meter. The customer put in all the pipes and trenches, which is awesome. He did a lot of hard work, did a great job, and was very helpful to us while we were here. So that's also great. And um, so right now we're just kind of a wrap up, just going through the usual. We go through our label packs and label it up for inspection. And then uh, we will probably, the only thing we have left to do is the microwave. So Rubik's batteries did great, got him through the night. He's got a pretty high load. So now he's figuring out what kind of, um, the beauty of having a, an inverter is that you actually get to see real time what's going on in your house. So when you get to look at the screen and you say, why am I using 5,000 watts of power right now? It makes no sense. And then you start to look at some of the loads and say, oh, either I have a bad compressor or I'm running, or I didn't know those things use that much power. And so what I found out here, they have a couple of pond aerators that are just running 24 seven. I think that's probably the big consumption because through the night he had a base load of like four to five thousand watts we still made it through the night so that's encouraging so now i know this place can run off grid you don't have to have the aerator so he's and he's also purchased a bunch of timers to shift the loads to when he's got excess solar energy so that um, we can definitely take advantage of that because we can't export power here um, he's connected to TVA somewhat, somehow the utility is, I think. Um, so anyway, so the batteries are now charging back up and uh, loving it. So we are using the Gigastax as an EMP hardened solution until another one comes along. As these are wonderful Faraday cages, metal on metal. Um, they're very, very good for that. We also add some toroids to the battery cables for EMP hardening. This is an EMP hardened system. Again, we put in our bypass, which is always important. Um, for our bypass, we have the Solark on top and the grid on the bottom, and you see how we double lug the grid. So we bring the grid in, it goes from the meter to the disconnect to the bypass, and then from the bypass, it comes in and lands on the grid input. So the flow of power goes from the meter to the disconnect to the bypass to the inverter. Then out of the inverter we hit the top. Well on this one we actually sometimes we just go right to the top of the bypass but because we're running multiple buildings we come out of that load and we hit a power distribution block over here. And that power distribution block splits to the bypass and it also starts to split off to this panel and then there's an RV park kind of uh, sub panel I'll show you. And also the feeders that he trenched all the way down to his house are all landed in that power distribution block. So we're feeding that panel inside. We're feeding this panel, which has RV. And then the conduit here goes to the house. And that's fed off of that power distribution block. And again, here's our AC disconnect. And then a fail-safe backup. He has a 7,000 watt Honda with an L1430 30 amp plug here. So he can get his batteries out of trouble in a grid down situation if he's using a ton of power. He can plug his, warm up his generator, plug it in. The Solark will recognize it and all the settings are set for it to charge the battery. So the whole place now is on one meter. So the meter down there, you can't really see it, but it is blanked and um, we are running everything through the Solark 15K. That's why he's able to see every electrical load at once. Now, if you want to fi figure out what each individual load is doing, of course, you can add CTs. There's so many products on the market for data acquisition and figuring out what your system's actually using by each circuit. But it's a great start to start with the Solark. Everything, all 200 amps are passed through the whole service is passed through this inverter. So it captures everything internally and tells you what it's doing. So that way we know, can you see it? Can you see it? It's not running much now, 2.2 kilowatts and the solar's covering it. What we like to see is nothing coming from the grid. That's the goal. 
and to be able to charge the battery simultaneously that is the goal so as from midnight till now we haven't used but maybe 50 watts and that's pretty much no grid so let me know if you have any questions um we're wrapping up another system so there's a lot of ways that we work with you can work with you like i said before the customer built this ground mount we supplied all the materials and we supply and then we brought with us the inverter uh, we shipped the batteries here so they were here in crates and then when we got here it was all hands on deck to build the system and get it working so i think he's very happy i hope he is most of the customers are super happy again there's so what is what does he get from this he gets energy independence absolute energy independence you can take advantage of the tax credit and then the other thing that i think is a big thing that you see every day is the power the rates changing rates going up uh no power bill just the minimal facility charge lease rate whatever your utility calls it and that can be 15 to 45 dollars depending on who you're connected to but if you can minimize that that being connected is cheap insurance i think very inexpensive insurance so that's it pretty simple we also made provision we always do in case i know they're doing a lot of building here and expanding he's got plenty of room and very easy to add another inverter power distribution blocks all set up for it so easy to parallel another one in and have a master slave configuration there as we do with a battery so um, that would be the thing to do if they keep expanding However, I tell customers just to monitor the system on MySolarc, the MySolarc app on the phone or on the desktop, and just determine what you need. Sometimes you don't need anything. Sometimes you just need a little bit more battery to bridge the gap in the morning till you get sunshine. So that's about it. So let me know if you have any questions. And um, again, we like to build them to expand. We don't find anybody that says, please give me less power. They always want more, and this gives them the freedom, the ability to take care of their own power bill and uh, have that energy independence with a little insurance back up um, with grid and or generator. So, all right. Let us know if we can help. This is Engineer 775. Signing out again.